Hi there, this is Pastor Ishola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging contents that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time for what the Lord has done for us. We're not ungrateful people in Rock Church, so let's give the Lord a round of applause one more time and just thank him for what he's doing. He is a faithful God, faithful in all his ways. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Hello, how are you all doing? Everyone doing well? Making the most of the sunshine and the weather. Who likes the warm weather? Yeah. Oh, only three people like the warm. Who likes the warm weather? I, I love the warm weather. You can't, you can't beat summer. Summer is my best time. Glory to Jesus. Some people love winter. I don't like winter. It's too cold for me. <laughs> too cold for me. I know I have a solution to, so if it's too hot, I put the AC on. So that way I am cool. But in winter, you put the heating on, sometimes the heating don't sort, it doesn't sort it out. How many of you have been there before? There's heating, but you're still cold. Amen. Glory to God. But we thank God because God created all different kinds of weather for our benefit. So look at your neighbor and say, this time will be for your benefit. This time will be for your moving forward. This time will be for your elevation. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I go into my message this, mo this morning, I want to welcome um, Josh Booth. Amen. Can we just put our hands together to, that yo to the young man just sat there? You know, he's visiting us today because he's the coordinator of the whole of scripture union you know, for the southeast am i correct <laughs> so he's just simply in his t-shirt and shorts and you might think he's just someone that just walked in and he's just fellowship with us but he is the coordinator of the whole of scripture union you know, for the whole of the southeast of england so let's just welcome him and the grace of God that's upon his life. So he's visiting us today because um, Scripture, you know, one to start a work with us as a ministry, um, especially in the youth ministry. So I'm going to be meeting with Pastor James and Sister Gislaine um, after this uh, uh, meeting alongside with um, Josh. So welcome, Josh. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a round of applause one more time. All right. My time starts to count from now. 30 minutes. Glory to God. Shall we just pray? Father, I want to thank you because you are so good. You are so faithful. There's no better place to be than in your presence at such a time as this. Lord, I thank you because this morning you're going to speak through me. And you're going to bless your people. Lord, I thank you because wherever two or three are gathered together in your name, your word says there you are in the midst of them. And we know that this morning is no exception to, the, to your presence that's right here. And I believe, Lord, that as everyone has come here with a diverse needs, you're going to speak a word in season. You're going to touch a life. You're going to bring transformation. You're going to bring elevation in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I submit myself as an instrument of honor that you will decode through me the heart of the Father for your people this morning. And that let Jesus alone be seen from this altar in the name of Jesus. I hide myself under the wings of the Lord God Almighty. And Lord, I ask that the Spirit himself will move in this place. Whoever needs healing this morning, I prophesy and I declare over you that your healing is complete. In the name of Jesus. Whoever needs an open door, I prophesy this morning that that open door is complete in the name of Jesus. Whoever needs a change of story, I speak over you under the unction of the Almighty that that change of story has come today in the name of Jesus. Whatever your need is this morning, I believe we have come to a place where needs are met, where eyes are open, where elevation takes place. And that will be your testimony in 
the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So look at your neighbor. Tell them God places a demand on your time. Come on, say it like you mean it. God needs your time. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm going to very quickly round up on the time uh, that I've been talking about because of the three things we have been talking about under faith and giving, and that is that the three things that the Lord will place a demand on. Uh, how many of us remember those three things? Number one, your body. Number two, and number three. So your body, your time, your substance. And so we've been talking about time. And I felt that I, I just needed to wrap this up and then I go into your body. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I want to start by making three statements. Number one, your time is an altar. Sacrifice it wisely. Don't be a time waster. Your time is an altar. The time you're spending in this place right now, you're raising up an altar. A spiritual altar because you're engaging in worship. So look at your number, tell them your time is an altar. Sacrifice it wisely. Don't be a time waster. Number two, your time is seed in your hand. Sow it wisely or spend it wisely. Hallelujah. If you invest time in your relationship with your children, your spouse, or your spouse, you will reap the harvest of peace, harmony, and joy in your home. So if you invest time wisely, you will reap what you desire. If you invest time in your fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you'll reap the harvest of divine wisdom. You'll reap the harvest of discernment and direction. Those who spend quality time with the Holy Spirit are never confused about their future or destiny. You're only confused about what your future is if you have not been spending time or taking time out to be with the Holy Spirit. So your time is your seed in your hand. Look at your neighbor, tell them your time is seed in your hand. Oh, come on, say like you want to say your time is seed in your hand. Somebody behind you needs to know. Turn around and tell somebody your time is seed in your hands. Because once time has gone, unless the Lord helps you to redeem the time, it is gone. There was a time I was 10 year, I was a 10 year old boy. No care in the world. Can you imagine when I was 10? Just hopping and jumping about. There was a time I was 20 in the prime of my youth. Glory to God. Amen. But now I'm, well, I'm not going to say it. You don't need to know. But you can imagine for those who know, you know. There's that funny meme that says, if you don't get it, forget about it. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. If you know, you know. But I'm no longer 10, neither am I 20, neither am I 30, neither am I even 40 anymore. Praise the Lord. Yes, neither am I. Th th thank you. Thank you for letting the cat out of the bag, Pastor D. I was going to confuse some people. Amen. But I realized that when I strict tried to do what I was, what I could do when I was 20, I couldn't. So sometimes my son, I put him on the spot, and he comes and says, Dad, let's box. I said, you don't want to see, you don't want to, you don't want to see me box with you. Because of course, his strength is in his youth, so his strength will be greater than mine. It doesn't matter how, unless I command him by force, lie on the floor. Because I'm his father. So I have to defeat him. But the truth of the matter is that if I were to go into a boxing challenge with him, he will floor me down. But if I was in my 20, he dare not say that. Glory to Jesus. So there is a time that you can do certain things. And once that time is passed, then you have to readjust into your new phase and the new time that you're in. So 
Time is seed in your hands. Can you tell someone again, time is seed in your hands? Or say it again, time is seed in your hands. If you invest it wisely, you will reap a good harvest. And then thirdly, time is a weapon in your possession. Your time is a weapon in your possession. Use it wisely to your advantage. Hallelujah. Those who despise time are destiny wasters. If you're around someone who despises time, always wanting to waste your time, always wanting to hang around doing nothing, you need to run away from such. Why? Because they are destiny wasters and they despise time. What you don't put into time, you will never get out of time. If I'm, if I'm wanting to get something out of time, I have to be willing to put something into time. Those who do nothing with their time never recognize their time and chance when it passes by. Hallelujah. One man of God once said, if you want to fail, just do nothing. Just do what? nothing and you will get a first class as a failure hallelujah ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 says i returned under the sun and saw that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong neither yet bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill but time someone say time and chance someone say chance happen it to them all. And I looked very closely at this scripture a little bit closely because if you just read it on the surface, you would think God is saying that, look, it doesn't matter. You don't really need to do much. It is time and chance you need to wait for. But I recognized that this is not the case because is the Bible saying here that it's not good to be swift? Of course not. Is the Bible saying that it's not good to be strong? Of course not. Is the Bible saying that it's not good to be wise? Of course not. Is the Bible saying that you don't need to have understanding or you don't need to have skill? Of course not. It's telling you from the scripture that even though you may have all of these things, what elevates you is time and chance. Time talks about due season. Chance talks about opportunity. So if you're forthcoming in your skills, when opportunities come, you'll recognize your opportunity. And you make the most of it. But if you think you don't need skill, if you think you don't need understanding, if you think that, oh, you don't need to be wise, you are making a fool of yourself because you need all of these things. How many of you know you need to be smart? There's what you call spiritual smartness. So time and chance. Tell your neighbor time and chance. Say it again. Say time and chance. And so Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 says, So to yourselves in righteousness and you will reap in mercy. When you sow, it takes time to sow. It takes time to, to do certain things as seed. When you sow to yourselves in righteousness, you're going to reap in mercy. It says, break up your fallow ground for it is time. Look at your number and say, it is time. It is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. It takes time to seek the Lord. You engage with time when you spend time with the Lord. Psalms 63 verses 1 to 2 says, O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for you, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see your power and your glory, so as I have seen you in the sanctuary. And verse 5 says, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. How many of you know that it takes time to meditate? So for you to become a soul that is satisfied with marrow and fatness and for you to have a mouth that praises God with joyful lips, you have to engage in the art of remembering God upon your bed and meditating upon him in your night times. And it's called night watches. 
Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me. How many lovers of God are here? I want to believe everyone loves God. That's why they're here this morning. Amen. It says, and those that seek me early will find me. Hallelujah. Those that seek me early. Look at your and say, don't be a late comer. Oh, don't be a late seeker. Be an early seeker. In other words, there's a time in the prime of your youth. Ecclesiastes said there's, one, there's only one thing that he has discovered. At the end of all, is, it is vain. It is vain vanity. He said one thing that I've discovered. Serve the Lord God in your youth. Hallelujah. So that you're going to enjoy your old age. I'm going to enjoy my old age. You're going to enjoy your old age. Because the seeds that you've sown in your youth is reaping for you a harvest of God's goodness in your old age. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So that's it wrapped up about time. I hope you've understood something there about your time and, and what, you know, how the Lord places a demand on your time. Now I'm moving over to your body. Somebody say my body. My body. Come on, say my body, my body is a sanctuary of the Lord. Amen. Say it again. Say my body belongs to God. Look at your neighbor. Tell them your body belongs to God. Come on, say like you say, your body belongs to God. See, some people think they own their bodies. You don't own your body. It belongs to God. You've got a responsibility as a steward of your body to care for your body, to make sure you're presentable with your body, but actually it belongs to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 20 says, Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It says, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It says, and such were some of you, but you are washed. Look at your number and say, you've been washed. Oh, come on, say it like you may say, say you've been washed. It says, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. Tell your neighbor, you have been sanctified. Come on, say it again, say you have been sanctified. It says, but you are justified. Tell them again, you've been justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Hallelujah. So you have been washed. You have been sanctified. You have been justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So that's why your life is no longer after the old. We sang that song, if anyone be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. So look at your neighbor, tell them all things are passed away. And all things have become new with you. Hallelujah. Because you've been washed, sanctified, and justified. So verse 12 says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. In other words, I will not become a slave to any. So I am at liberty to do what I want, but I choose what I do. Hallelujah. How many of you know you can do whatever you want? You are liberty to do whatever you want. No one's going to arrest you. But you also have to understand that you have to learn how to choose what to do. In other words, you learn to choose right. Hallelujah. So it says, verse 13 says, meats for the belly and belly for the meats. He said, but God shall destroy both it and them. It says, now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And verse, verse 14 says, and God had raised up, both raised up the Lord and would also raise us up by his own power. And verse 15 is where I'm going, which is really key. It says, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. He says, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. Look at your number say, God forbid. And verse 16 now says, what? Know ye not that he that is joined to an harlot is one body. 
For two saith he shall be one flesh. And verse 17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. When I caught that revelation many years ago, that when, because I'm joined to the Lord, I have become one with him. It then began to determine the things that I say and the things that I do. Hallelujah. So don't think of yourself that you're just, you're just walking. That Don't think you're separate. God is separate. God is saying to you that when you are joined to the Lord, you have become one spirit with the maker of the heavens and the earth. So it says in verse 18, it says, flee fornication. It says, because every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. And he says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor. Tell them your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. Are, are, we, are we still alive or going to sleep? Tell your neighbor your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is a temple? A temple is a special place dedicated for the worship of and fellowship of a particular deity or a god. So in other words, when you talk about a temple, nothing just happens there. You can't walk in and start, you know, and have parties in there. You can't walk in and set up an office in there. You can't walk in and it is dedicated for a special purpose. And it's always about a certain deity or a God. And the Holy Spirit is saying from his word, says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you look at your neighbor and tell them your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In other words, your body houses the Spirit of God. So not only is the Spirit of God on you, He's also in you. And that Spirit is what signifies that God the Father and God the Son is also in you. Because what the Holy Spirit does, He brings the Father and the Son together and they merge together and they're indwelling in you. When the Holy Spirit checks out, God has checked out. When the Holy Spirit checks out, Jesus has checked out. Hallelujah. Because where you find Jesus, you would find the Holy Spirit. Or where you find the Holy Spirit, you will find Jesus. If you're looking for the power of God, search for the Holy Spirit. Because wherever you find the Spirit of God, the power of God is there. If you believe that, say amen. So it says, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God and you are not your own. It says, verse 20 says, for you were bought with a prize. What's the price? Who can guess? You're bought with a price. What's the price? What's the price? The blood of Jesus. Because that blood was shed. So I say, normally say that Jesus wasn't playing games when he decided, let them pierce me, hurt me. You know, who's ever watched The Passion of the Christ? That just gives us an insight into what really took place with Jesus. In the Passion of the Christ, I could still recognize Jesus, but my Bible tells me in Isaiah that when we looked at him, we could not recognize him. So which means what was done to Jesus was far much deeper than what the Passion of the Christ captured. Hallelujah. So you were bought with a price. It cost God his only begotten son. All that he had, God gave his best as the prize to redeem you back to himself. It says, therefore, glorify God in your body. Now look at your neighbor one more time. There's going to be a lot of talking this morning because I want it to really register. So look at your neighbor. Tell them, glorify God in your body always. Come on, say like you may say, glorify God in your body always. And in your spirit, which are God's. So your body and your spirit don't belong to you they belong to God. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice. 
not a dead one, but a living one. So which means you're perpetually a sacrifice that's burning for the Lord. Perpetually on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. In other words, your expected service. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. So tell your neighbor, there's no reason why you should be confused. If you present your body a living sacrifice, hallelujah, and you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So there's something I want to connect here. What the mind, the influence of the mind over the body. Because transformation comes by the renewing of the mind. Because your body is the physical container that keeps your spirit in this earthly realm. Once your body gives up, your spirit checks out. At the end of life on earth, what returns back to God is your spirit, not your body. So you've got to learn how to keep that body well. So how do I keep my body well? Two things I want to talk and I'll round about. I want to talk about and I'll round up and I'll round it up this morning. I've got six minutes, 47 seconds left. Amen. <laughs> So how do I keep my body well? Because my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Number one, pay attention to your mind. Pay attention to your mind. If your mind is in the right place, your body will be found in the right places. I'm going to say that again. If your mind is in the right place, your body will be found in the right places. When you find yourself in the wrong place, it means your mind is in the wrong place. If your mind is well, your body will be well. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So in the Bible, when it talks about the reason of the mind, it uses the, the, the heart and the soul interchangeably. Amen? And so sometimes when it talks about the heart or the soul, it's actually talking about the mind and how you renew and what you keep in your mind. So it says, my son, attend to my words, Proverbs chapter 4, incline thine ears to my saints. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. It says, keep your heart, verse 23, with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Or that translation says, because your mind controls your life. I think that's the good news translation that says that. Hallelujah. And Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus went further in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18 to 19. He says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. That's what defiles a man. It says, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. And in 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, as your mind prospers. If your mind is constantly thinking health and well-being, you will be well. Because your mind controls your life. So when you watch what comes into this mind, what you are allowed to settle in this mind, trust me, it's not going to take long. What you are allowed to settle eventually becomes the order of your body. Praise God. I say, praise God. Are you still with me? Look at your neighbor. Are you still here? So tell them, pay attention to your mind. So how do things get into the mind? What I hear, what I listen to, what I watch, what I allow to go in, especially through my eyes and through my ears. That's what influences my mind. So if you're used to listening to gossip and backbiting and backchatting and all the rest of it, guess what will happen? Your mind is going to be polluted and then your body will begin to respond likewise. 
I said to people, I say this, I said, there's no 100% without fault church. So when somebody brings news about another church, in that church they always, I say, well, here, there are human beings here too. <laughs> I said, there are human beings? I said, you want to go to a church where it's just logs of wood. You are the preacher. You are the praise and worship leader. You are the one that preaches. You are the one that says, amen. That, that, that can be a church good for you. Amen. But if you're going to be in a church that's filled with all loads of people, there will be issues. Amen. So you've got to make up your mind. You can come to a place. And that place is like there's value. You, you, you receive so much value. And then after a while, the same place that gave you value, you don't value it anymore. Why? Because someone told you something. And then what you never saw, you begin to see. Amen. So it's so important what I listen to. So if someone's coming to chit chat and tell, I say, have you, so I don't, my, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, uh, what do you call it? I'm not a, um, a receiver of your issues and your problems. Amen. If you, if you're so troubled, take it to the Lord. But if you're coming to share, it's about how do I, you know, there's a way. I don't know if I'm putting it right this morning. Amen. But my body is not a receiver of, don't damp, look at you and say, don't dampen my spirit. Come on. <laughs> don't dampen my spirit. I've come to serve the Lord. Behave yourself. And also, it doesn't mean because you know, we're a church without, that, that doesn't mean that people won't have issues, then you then misbehave. Also, you cannot misbehave. Tell your neighbor, don't misbehave. Uh -huh. Don't misbehave. Because you're going to think, yeah, yeah, pastor says, so I can step on your toes, I can annoy you. I can... No, don't annoy me for too long. Because you'll see my other eye if you annoy me for too long. <laughs> Amen. Let's be people that are watchful and esteem others better than each other. You should come to church, and after a year, your behavior should be better than you came in. If it's still the same, something is wrong somewhere. Amen. Amen. My behavior should be better. Because I'm rubbing minds with people who want to become better, who want to get better. I'm rubbing minds with people who want to grow in their spirituality. So I should be getting better. So should you. So if you're still angry, when you came, you were angry. After two years, you're still angry. Something is wrong. You were sad when you came. After two years, you're still sad. Oh, my word. Amen. That something is wrong. So I should be better. So look at you and say, I'm looking at a better version of you. Oh, come on. Say, I'm looking at a growing and better version of you. Because you're paying attention to your mind. Hallelujah. And finally, because my time is nearly up. Oh, two seconds. Okay. Can you give me two extra minutes? Amen. Glory to God. Then number two, pay attention to bodily exercise. Attention to bodily exercise. I'm talking to myself also here. Amen. <laughs> bodily exercise. There's some of us that are starters and stoppers. We start, we stop. We start, we stop. We start, we stop. We start, we stop. How many of you are in that boat with me? Don't lie. The Holy Ghost is here. Don't lie. Starters and stoppers. Deliverance has come today. <laughs> right. I just heard that's another revelation. So we need to have a Holy Ghost service for those who don't start at all. <laughs> Amen. So pay attention to bodily exercise. Because you need this body to accomplish your destiny. If God says 120 years, you need a body that will carry you for 120 years. Not a body that is tired by the time you're 80. Glory to God. And so this body, you need to pay attention to it. Bodily exercise, First Timothy 4, 8. It says, it profited little. That little, because it's temporal... At most 120 years, that's why the Bible says little. 
So it doesn't mean don't pay attention to it. Because someone will say, hey, it profits little, so why do I? No, I'm not interested. It profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Having a promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. So the fitness of your physical body goes a long way in determining your potential lifespan. So simple things like walking more than you drive. Walk, look at you and say, walking more than you drive. I, I don't think I'm even the best person to talk about this, to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I'm talking about and I'm being convicted right now. <laughs> walking, Holy Ghost, why did you do this to me? Walking more than you drive. And healthier eating. Just those two simple things. <laughs> can potentially, listen now, can potentially contribute to adding a sizable number of years to your number of days on the earth. Hallelujah. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Lord wants you to take care of it. So in concluding this morning, can you say with me, my body is my earthly vessel to accomplish my destiny in God. Come on, say it again. Say, my body is my earthly vessel to accomplish my destiny in God. I will keep it holy. I will keep it fit to the best of my ability and with the help of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's rise to our feet this afternoon. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So lift up your hands and begin to bless his name. Lift up your hands, begin to exalt him. Lift up your hands, begin to worship him. He is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, begin to thank you for the body that he's given you. Begin to bless his name this morning. Begin to magnify him. He is worthy. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My body is your sanctuary, O God. My body, ah, it is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I will keep it holy. I'll keep it fit. I'll do whatever it takes. Come on, ask for grace this morning. Ask for grace this afternoon. Ask for grace this afternoon to pay attention to your mind. Pay attention to your mind. Be careful what goes through your mind. Be careful what you allow to settle in because it becomes the order of your body. Come on, bless him this afternoon. Grace to refuse what needs to be refused. Grace to refuse to recognize what can destroy your body, what can destroy your mind, and be able to say no in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we worship you. Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. So, Father, we thank you because our body belongs to you. This body will serve you. It will fulfill purpose. It will accomplish destiny. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let health sound health rest upon everyone under the sound of my voice today let there be a redemption of our bodies oh God let there be oh God let the balm of Gilead rest upon your bodies right now in the name of Jesus the Bible says he renews your youth like the eagles let it be a renewal of youth falling upon every single one under the sound of my voice this afternoon in the name of the Lord Jesus father we thank you we give you all the glory for in Jesus' name we have prayed amen and amen if you've been blessed let's give the Lord a round of applause this afternoon hallelujah